Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. The end of barrel scraping is near, less than two weeks away from the premiere of charity season of Bachelorette. And I'll tell you what, we have never seen a post-Bachelor as quiet, uh, dull, and lackluster as the season following Zach Shall Cross this season. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It means he's non-problematic, uh, to say the least. Uh, of course, the biggest drama was whether or not he treated Gabby right after dismissing her before choosing Katie Bigger. But either way, he's ready to get back to work. You know, a lot of times you see this nuclear fallout from a season and this sort of clutching onto a reality that could be, not the reality that is. We know Brandon, uh, following Bachelor paradise shared his struggles of becoming an influencer and it seems like zach wants nothing to do with that now we talk about influencership like it's some horrible thing but for me it's all about capitalism and if you can build your audience in equity you can live your life in a way that's meaningful to you well for zach a way that's meaningful to him is having a uh you know pretty uh pretty uh hefty bi-weekly paycheck which you can't blame him Clayton Eckerd also went back into, uh, I don't, I don't want to call it the corporate world. He's in real estate now. But uh, I think what we're realizing is, is that it's the end of the uh, uh, Instagram era of Bachelor Nation where you're uh, given the chance to make uh, pretty wild money. Some people do, some people don't. All right, do me a favor. You want to see me make some wild money, go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'm kidding. It's not much, but for as little as $5 a month, you help me fund all of the uh, equipment and uh, things that help make the channel what it is. Also, every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast will be there. And I've got stand-up show updates over there on my Instagram, at Neals. I'll have the tickets on sale probably next week for my show in Seattle, August. 24th and I've got a lot of other local shows coming up so you can check all that out okay let's get into it the bachelor Zach shell cross had enough of reality TV I'll take a nine to five please let's listen to what he has to say on the third of my the 30 mile zone.com there were several times during filming where I would think about my previous job and think okay uh, is he recording in a sauna where, where is he um, do I really want to go back? What's kind of my my plan? It, you know, in a sense, it's this really unique uh, break you're put on. You know, you're you're filming this TV show, and and you kind of put your life on pause. But during filming, I realized, you know, I I, I want to get back into normalcy again, like pretty quick. Okay, and he wants to get back into normalcy. I got to say, just from a production quality standpoint, when you have a larger nostrils, hey, take it from me, I got a large schnoz. When you have larger nostrils, don't film from the from the ground looking up. Film from up looking down. I don't can't know. really um, with a lot of the, the commitments you have with the show. Um, but it, it, was, it was pretty quick. Pretty quick. I didn't get into it for the um, the writing a bachelor book or anything like that. Like, uh, that wasn't that uh, was not my goal. His goal was not to write the Bachelor book, and as we can see from his lack of a Instagram following, he's achieved that goal. Two hundred and thirteen thousand followers. I mean, it used to be relatively guaranteed when you got the Bachelor, you'd hit a million followers. His fiance Katie has two hundred and ninety-eight. So Katie Bigger has a bigger Instagram following than Zach Shall Cross, which isn't everything, but it just goes to show that's not where his priorities have been talking with a few companies, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I, had, I just had this realization um, pretty recently that, you know, I, I want to get into it as soon as, as I can. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do it. Um, it's, it's been quite some time since, you know, my, my time at, uh, at my previous company Oracle, but I just want to get back in a normal, normal swing of things. Yeah. People do ask a lot of, you know, oh, you just were The Bachelor or you were on TV for quite some time. Don't you want to stick with that life or the influencing life or whatever comes from that? And I think all of that is great. It's all cool. Um, it's very interesting. And I, and I don't want to say it's something I'll never get back into. Um, you know, I have like my passions in, in certain um, in, in certain areas um, Gosh, boring. outside of what sales is. So... That's not off the table, but what is on the table right now is getting back to that normal sales life that I'm good at. 
I feel like what he could make a lot of money selling us um, podcasts where he just talks for people that can't fall asleep at night. Well, my sales goals at my previous, you know, no offense to him, just, you know, not an interesting conversation. And that I really do like, um, but that's not saying that, you know, I'm giving a big X to entertainment by any means. Well, my ideal dream job would be to actually be a, a voice actor for cartoons like that that's kind of my passion my uncle um is a very successful voice actor patrick warburton um and growing up watching him be all these cool characters and just watching tv and being like oh that's my uncle like he's doing that and i've always just been you know the biggest fan of him and i thought wow i i think that's a life i'd want to do i think i've got a pretty unique voice but i think that would be really what i would ideally love to do um in the meantime well you got to get a demo reel together we got to get you a better microphone you want to be a voice actor let's get you a good microphone here um he said his passion is voiceover I, this is my this is the first time i've heard of it i think that's great follow your passion if you want to be a voiceover actor why are you not capitalize on capitalizing on it right now when you have the most attention going after you you know what i mean strike while the iron is hot Go out there, go to, you know, some film school, go to the anima animation department and say, I will voice your cartoons you're making. And um, I, he could get work right away. Uh, I'd like to be with, you know, a really strong, you know, sales company, tech company to kind of get me back into the normal swing of things. Um, but yeah, that's my angle. All right. Sounds like Zach's broke. No, I'm kidding. Uh, look, hey, I get so much hate when, not hate, but whenever I criticize people with normal jobs, I've, I've done it. I've done sales. I've done door-to-door -door sales, in-home sales, other types of sales. I'm trying to sell you on hitting the like button right now. Join the Patreon for gosh shakes. Uh, but um, I don't know. I mean, it's like, do you want to be a salesperson or do you want to be a voiceover actor? I don't know too many people that want to do both. So which one is it? All right. So all of this made news when he posted on on his LinkedIn uh, a couple of days ago. He said this. And by the way, Zach, and I'll read his resume for you. Yeah, seriously, though, do me a favor. Hit the like button if you're listening or watching this on YouTube. Um, we need to get back in the algorithm's good grace uh, so we can make more content. The only way that YouTube pushes my content to new people is if enough people early on will like that video, comment on it, and watch it in its full length. So help me out if you could. I'm Zach, and I'm open to work, is what Zach said on LinkedIn. The last year has been an incredible journey. Many of you know a small part of it after watching me on The Bachelor and Bachelorette and The Bachelor. I had the opportunity to travel the world. I was able to meet some amazing people, and I even fell in love with the girl of my dreams. Uh, and he, he, met, he didn't mention this part, but he also, um, he also exposed that he had sex with Gabby in the fantasy suite even though she and him had agreed they wouldn't talk about that. That, that. that was in the rough draft. But the reality has finally kicked in. I want to get back to a sense of normalcy. While at Oracle, I was a top producer and closed millions in ARR. And that is ultimately what I want to do again with my life. I'm hungry for a new sales role. What I'm looking for, a company that values their employees, a company that is growing fast, a company that compensates reps well. Pay me! If you, if you know of someone hiring, let me know. I'm ready to start selling again. Is there a company out there willing to give me a rose? Oh, boy. Zach knows what he's doing here. And then he got a response. Okay, hear me out. We put you and 30 recruiters in the Bahamas. They get to court you. Each day you give out roses to the recruiters that get to stay. All right, anyway. So, look, maybe I'm being a little grumpy this morning. I'm, I'm happy for Zach um, who wants to get back to normalcy. It must suck. You, you know, you, you make a few bucks as The Bachelor. You know, they do. They make about $150,000. Uh, once the taxes and you know the uh, management and the lawyer fees come in, it's not a crazy amount considering you're leaving your high-paying job. So he's looking to get back in. I just get so triggered by corporate lingo. Senior cloud technology account executive surpassed fiscal year attainment goal at 167%. Do you talk like this in the bedroom? I'm going to make you uh, attain your fiscal representation. Okay, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, exceeded fit. Oh, he also exceeded his fiscal year attainment goal by 278% from 2020 to 2021. So Zach, how come you only attained your fiscal year goal by 278% and then you only, and then you dropped it to 167%. Are we to believe that next year you're not going to attain your fiscal year attainment goal, Zach? 
Come on. So corporate bullshit is just a term that has existed for a while. There's a corporate BS generator where you just hit this button and it tells you your corporate phrases. Dynamically my, my, myocardinate low-risk high-yield services. Intrinsically repurpose intuitive internal organic sources. Quickly implement on-demand information. Proactively optimize reliable. It just goes on and on. But I thought, what about me? What about me as a power recapper? If I were to create a LinkedIn for my power recapping skills, what power buzzwords would I use? Well, funny you should ask. I, Dave Neal, energetically deliver client-based hearsay, quelling disinformation in an ethical entertainment value-based vocalization. That's right. That's what I do. Not bad, huh? Okay. Anyway, so yeah, Katie's back to work here. She's working, you know, as a nurse. And um, Zach's back, uh, going back to work as a sales guy. And apparently, Zach also wants to um, be a voiceover actor, which I'm not knocking that. I'm a proud, card-carrying member of the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> I just think, I don't know, if you want to pursue that goal, Zach, let me know. I can help you out either way. Uh, happy for them to get back to normalcy. But normal it looks different for different people. Some people normal is a sales gig. Some people normal is starting a podcast called Bachelor Rush Hour, which you can listen to every afternoon. We'll have more content for you. I'll be live at 10 a.m. on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And I will talk to you guys later. I have been value-based uh, vocalizing entertainment and ethical hearsay specialist in the client uh, delivered world energetically I've been Dave Neal